welcome everyone to today's webinar. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be talking about the additional options in attendance entry. So this is essentially attendance entry part two, um, looking at some of the more detailed attendance entry items that we can track through church windows. So if you're looking for just a basic overview of attendance entry, that is not this topic today. Um, today we're going into detail on tracking communion and uh, additional options that are available in attendance entry. Um, this is going to be covering Membership 202 workbook, if you are following along in the workbooks that are available for purchase on our website. Again, that's Membership 202, and this is going to be on pages 8 through 11. So let's go ahead and dive in. When we open up membership, we have an attendance entry button right here in the middle in our quick access buttons to make it nice and easy to get to. You can also come up here to the top, the um, button bar up here at the top and click attendance and attendance entry right there. They're both going to take you to the exact same place. So here in the attendance entry screen, we select an event or a group class. I'm going to start with an event, our contemporary worship, and then we choose a date. Now, since we are talking about additional options today, I'm going to go back to January and look at some attendance um, from earlier in the year. I thought I loaded data that had attendance already. That's okay. All right. So when you are taking attendance, you have these three columns here for attendance entry on an event. You have present, excused, and communion. So if you're going to be tracking communion, you can either just use this communion column to check people, and it will also check them as present. Just go through and check off our people for our attendance in the communion category. Or if you've already marked a bunch of people present in the present category, you can come over here to the communion category, right click with your mouse, and choose Check Communion for all that are checked present. And what it'll do is it'll mirror the present check marks into that communion column. So now those couple of folks that I just marked as present are now also marked as communion. You can also, using a right click, mark multiple members of the same family as present check communion for entire family. And additional right-click options would be to check communion for all. If you know that almost everybody communed and you just want to remove a few people, that would be one quick way to do things. You could check all communion and then just go through and uncheck the couple of people who may not have communed, for example. So that is how we track communion. If we click on options right here, these are going to show us some additional attendance options that we have available. Starting with the communion tracking options, we can choose to track communion for just events or just groups and classes or neither using these checkboxes. So if they're both checked, then that communion option will show up for both events and groups classes. We have the same two choices for excused absence tracking. Maybe you don't want to worry about excused absences for events, but just for your groups and classes, just for your Sunday schools. So uh, a fairly typical setup would be to track communion for events, because that's going to be your worship services, 
and not track communion for groups classes, and then not track excused absences for events, but do track excused absences for groups classes. And you can do any combination therein. Continuing down the attendance options, we have sort attendees by. Now this is going to give us um, some nice options for what order the folks are listed in back here. If I look underneath real quick back at my list here in the attendance entry screen. So this first option, last first, strict alphabetical, is going to do exactly that. It's going to just pay attention to the first and last names of the people. The second two options are including the family name. And we've got a little asterisk description down here that explains what the family name is. So the family name is the name of the family's individual whose directory report order is one. So what that means is whoever the primary person is, their name is the family name. So this is most typically useful in cases where the spouses have different last names and potentially the children have different last names from the parents as well. So if that is the case, we'll say, you know, dad is Bob Smith and maybe mom is Susan Jones and the kids are hyphenated. We would want them still to be all next to each other in this list. And so what we could choose instead of the strict alphabetical is we could choose to put the family name first and then sort by the last and first names. So that would take our primary person, Bob Smith, and it would sort the whole family in the Smith section. And then it would sort them by their different last names all next to each other. And then this one would group the family individuals with the same last name together. So all the kids would be together if they have the same name, and then mom and dad would be in their alphabetical order for their separate last name. So those are our three sort options. I hope that makes sense. Moving along, we have the option to relabel certain fields. Um, if you want to track something additional and not track communion, you could change communion to something else. Um, perhaps uh, you have confessions of faith and you want to check if if folks have made those confessions of faith on a week-to-week -week basis you could rename communion confessions of faith you could rename groups classes if you'd like and then division department and category are the ways that we sort our groups and classes and those can be renamed as well if you're not sure what the division department and category are, go ahead and check out the video that we've made about setting up your groups and classes, and those will make a little bit more sense. So those are all of our options for attendance. I'm going to cancel and not save any of these changes that I've made. Um, but if you click OK, it will save those changes. And the last two things in this window that we can do are remove the address column. Again, peeking back behind our options at the actual attendance entry screen, if you don't want to see the address, you just uncheck show address column. And then you can reset to the default layout. So the final thing we're going to be talking about real quick is tracking additional information for groups and classes. So if I switch off of events and change to groups classes and I choose my 
Sunday school, I'm going to choose my 7th and 8th grade because I know I have more folks enrolled there. You'll see I have quite a few additional columns now besides just my typical present, excused, and communion. I have A, B, and S. And those are coming from the Setup Groups Classes screen, which I'll pop over to in just a sec here. So those are going to have the same right-click options just like Communion and Present. And if you hover over them, they tell you what the code stands for. A is participated well, B is brought Bible, and S is studied lessons in this case. So if we close out of there and we go to our Setup Groups Classes screen up here next to Attendance, Group Skills, then Setup Group Skills. And if I open up one of my Sunday schools, you can see I have the additional code options here. And those can be used to track essentially anything you'd like to track. Um, maybe if it's not a class, maybe it's a finance committee, we would want to add a code um, regarding whether or not this person has brought um, information with them um, about, uh, you know, whatever their responsibilities are as finance chair um, or part of the finance committee, rather. So by clicking the plus minus pencil button over here, that's an edit button. It allows us to edit our codes. You can click the minus to get rid of a code. But if it's been used, um, you would lose all of the data. So I'm going to say no. And if you do want to add a new code, um, you just click in the code box. And you can type letters or numbers, but only one character for the code is allowed. Um, so maybe we'll put a 1 for um, prepared data for meeting. That's maybe one that we would want for our finance chair. So I added it by typing in the code and description and clicking Add. And now if I choose Select Item, it should allow me to come over here and add that as a code for this finance committee. And if I'm in one of the groups that has multiple codes, I can rearrange them using these arrows. And I can use this red minus to remove it just from this specific group or class. Finally, if I come back here to Attendance Entry and I choose one of my groups and classes again, and a date, I have a Comments tab right here. This Comments tab allows me to enter, beyond those additional information checkboxes, any kind of notes I might want to add. General meeting notes might just be a description of how the class went. Um, or what was discussed at the, the meeting um, of the Finance Committee. Lessons studied um, would allow me for a Bible study or a Sunday school. I could enter in um, specific verses that were talked about or um, specific topics that were covered. And then attendance factors, and it's got e.g. bad weather. Um, that is where you might want to put something like um, maybe it was Labor Day weekend or perhaps there was a, a hurricane. We had, you know, a lot of folks affected by hurricanes a couple of weeks back. So all of those kind of attendance factors, things that might have contributed to a low or a high attendance, 
um, you know, maybe on Easter or Christmas, you would you would enter that as an attendance factor because you have folks who are showing up who don't usually come. So those are the additional options available for attendance tracking. So that concludes today's webinar. If you are with us live and you have questions, go ahead and type those into the questions panel on the toolbar of the webinar, and I would be happy to answer any of those questions. Otherwise, go ahead and sign out. Thank you so much for attending. I'll stick around for any questions that might come through. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions come in, so I'm going to close the room. Thanks again, everyone. Bye-bye.